In February 2025, the Government of Canada announced plans for the country's first high-speed rail network dedicated to passenger travel, with trains reaching speeds of up to 300 km per hour. The proposed line would span nearly 1,000 km along the Toronto-Quebec City corridor connecting seven cities. High-speed rail is expected to be transformative for Canada. It is anticipated to create jobs, boost the economy and tourism, and reduce congestion and greenhouse gas emissions. Travel times would be cut nearly in half, with trips between Montreal and Toronto taking as little as three hours. But these benefits come with a significant price tag. The December 2025 announcement naming the Ottawa-Montreal corridor as the first project phase has drawn attention to the scale of this investment. According to Transport Canada, the project's capital cost is estimated at between 60 and 90 billion 2024 dollars, which raises the question, how can Canada ensure the long-term fiscal viability of high-speed rail? A financial feasibility analysis by Transportation Research at McGill, or TRAM, shows that alongside fair revenue and public subsidies, land value capture is part of the answer. A land value capture is based on a simple idea. Major public investments, such as new transport infrastructure like high-speed rail, raise surrounding land value. Since these gains are created by public infrastructure, governments can capture a portion of the value uplift to help finance the project that created it. International experience since 2008 shows that these gains are often concentrated around key nodes. By capturing land value increases around stations and along the corridor, Canada could supplement fare revenues, reduce long-term subsidies, and improve the overall financial viability of the high-speed rail. Mixed-use development around stations would not only increase ridership, but also add much-needed new housing in the market. TRAM's analysis affirms that without land value capture, the high-speed rail would not become financially self-sufficient within a 50-year lifetime, requiring long-term public subsidies. However, with land value capture covering 15% of capital costs, the system could reach financial self-sufficiency within its lifetime. To make this possible, Canada should prioritize station locations with redevelopment potential and enable land value capture at scale by leading development within a defined area around the stations. Done right, the financial burden of Canada's new high-speed rail could become a long-term, sustainable investment. For more information and to read the full report, visit tram.mcgill.ca.